as we unravel the mystery behind Muti. Welcome to the wonderful world of DNA barcoding. Now to simply explain what DNA barcoding is, it's a relatively new science that uses a short sequence, gene sequence, on a standard genome to actually identify species. What did I just say? It is basically, for example, imagine you're in a supermarket and you walk down any aisle and head off to the till. Once you get to the till, you're actually able to scan your item and the scan machine displays the name of the item. Now how is that possible and how can that same technology be applied to natural resources? This is where DNA barcoding was birthed. We take an unknown sample, we bring it to the lab, we extract its DNA, which is the basis of all life, and all life contains DNA. We extract its DNA and when we digitalize its DNA, we are able to identify what sample it is. So in this way, you are actually able to identify any unknown sample to a known. The advantage of DNA barcoding is that you simply need a small piece of the plant material to extract DNA from. You don't need to look at the sample, at its flowering parts, or at any root system. You merely need simple small piece of plant material to start the process and you can actually identify your sample to a species level. So the reason why I chose to study here at the University of Johannesburg so I can actually be in the facility called the African Centre for DNA Barcoding which is actually the only centre in Africa currently that specialises in DNA barcoding. There are three basic steps to DNA barcoding and we have four rooms in here which we use for DNA barcoding. This right here is the extraction room. That's where we get our samples and we actually extract the DNA from the sample. Then we go into our main lab where we do most of our physical work with the extracted sample. Main lab. Main lab. So this is the main lab where most of our lab conductors and instructors will actually come and do their physical lab work where we'll do, conduct most of our experiments using the centrifuge machine or the PCR machine. So the PCR machine actually multiplies the amount of DNA we have in our sample so we have a tangible amount to actually process further. So this is the gel room. As you can see, you can't really enter without um, the proper gear because of the exposure of UV lights and other chemicals. But in this room, what we do is we visualize our DNA on a gel, what we call a gel, and you'll see an image of that later. This is where we can see if our plant sample actually contains the right amount of DNA for us to continue with our process. Then last but not least, this is our sequencing room where we take our samples once it's been PCR and visualized, we bring it to this big machine over here called the sequencer. What this does is it turns the actual material DNA into digital DNA containing the four bases A, T, G and C. So what we basically do in this lab is turn actual DNA into digital DNA which we can analyze and actually compare to what is out there. So right now I'm going to show you a basic demonstration of what we do with the samples once we, they come in from the market. So this is a sample that we've just collected from the Muti market. What we do is we place it on the sheet so it doesn't contam contaminate our surface. Then we have alcohol swab which we use to actually clean any contaminants that can be found on our, on our sample. This is an extraction kit which we actually take, we actually use to take just a bit of leaf sample, probably five centimeters by five centimeters of any flashy leaf material. Once we've done that, we will then place our leaf sample using these forceps into a container and in that process go to the extraction room and start the chemical process of lysing, which means breaking down the material to open up so the DNA can actually be extracted from the plant sample.
The next process is done in a fume hood, which actually extracts all the chemicals that can be contaminating to you and harmful to you out through a vent so that you don't get the, the toxins. So what we have here is an array of chemicals which we will be using to actually lyse the material. First of all, we use silica powder, which is just silica gel, which you normally find in your shoes when you're buying a pair of shoes. It's in that little square thing that says do not eat. That is silica gel. We use it as you would use sand. Just take a little teaspoon of silica and you will pour it into your mortar and paste it. Now you begin the gruesome task of grinding. You will grind this material until it is a fine powder. Slide more in. Okay. Once the material is a fine powder, you will then transport it into a new falcon tube where you will actually pour chemicals to start the lysis process. So we will do that now. So there are three main ingredients for the lysis process. The CTAB chemical, the savage chemical, chemical and kneecap is the ethanol. Once these chemicals are in your tube, you will slowly start the process of inversion. And then we go into our hot tub. The solution in the tub, we it 15 minutes and actually let the process of lysis begin. So after your sample has been shaken, the next step is to actually centrifuge, which is a form of shaking, but with this, we'll actually separate our sample into layers, where you'll find the DNA layer and the mucky residues. So it actually helps us to extract the DNA layer without actually having the mucky residues. So this is our centrifuge machine, where we will actually place our sample in. One important thing with the centrifuge is that you can always balance it. So the reason why I chose to study here at the University of Johannesburg so I can actually be in the facility called the African Centre for DNA Barcoding which is actually the only centre in Africa currently that specialises in DNA barcoding.